you're cracking me up. I love coffee. Yo. Oh my gosh. I love y'all. Y'all are the best community ever. Well, this morning we are in, um, we are going to be in Deuteronomy chapter one and two. So Deuteronomy chapter one and two, um, that's where we're going to be. And, um, I have a few things that I think I, I want to talk to y'all about at the end of today, but, um, we're in Deuteronomy chapter one and two. So we're going to do that first. Um, and we, we, we're gonna, y'all are gonna have to um, bear with me because apparently I'm way more addicted to caffeine in the morning than I thought I was, and we're trying to get off that uh, first thing in the morning. So I'm drinking some water and pretending it's my pre-workout. Um, so we're we're gonna uh, we're gonna do this all together, I guess. <laughs> but Deuteronomy chapter one and two is where we're gonna be, and. Um, I was so excited to get finished with numbers. I can't even tell y'all. I know that this is technically still like early, early in the Old Testament, but it's just different. It's just different. And I don't even know that I've ever even made it to Deuteronomy, to be honest. Like I've always quit about in Leviticus when I've tried to read the Bible all the way through. But we've read Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, and Job. We've read all four of those books. That is literally incredible. Like we've been through, um, oh, and Exodus. Man, I just forgot that book altogether. So we've read literally, okay, so how many is that? That's Genesis, Exodus, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Job. We've read five books of the Bible, five complete books of the Bible. We're in this for the long haul, guys. This is going to be, we're finishing this, okay? We are finishing this that we're finishing this this year. If you've never read the Bible, we're doing it, okay, all the way through. So, we are in Deuteronomy. Um, Numbers was heavy. It was a lot of um, back and forth. It was a lot of, like, names. It was a lot of war type stuff. It was more um, sacrifices. It was more law. It was just, it was a lot. So, it was Leviticus, and now we are in Deuteronomy, and I am so excited. So let's pray and then we're going to start talking about it. Um, We're in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and chapter 2 today. Um, We'll probably camp out more in chapter 1 and then the first part of chapter 2. So that's probably where we'll land mostly today. So let's pray and then we will get started. Dear God, I come to you today and I just pray and ask that God you would... um, I pray that you would just cover us in your love and your mercy this morning, God. And I pray that you would um, that you would just open our eyes this morning to wisdom and truth and understanding. God, I pray this morning as we uh, read scripture, read your word, read the truth about who you are, God, that you would um, anoint us. God, I pray that you would protect us from the enemy, that you would... Um, lead us to the truth about who you are, God, not so that we would just look for ourselves, God, but we would look for you and who you are, God, so that we can know whose we belong to. God, I pray that this morning, if anybody is struggling with any kind of stronghold on their life or shame or guilt or anything else that the the enemy is trying to use to bring them down, that you would allow them to release that. God, I pray that you would um, cover us in your grace and your mercy so that we can be kingdom workers for you. God, hide me behind that cross and Job in spite of me and my failures this morning in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, we are in Deuteronomy chapter one and chapter two. And so if you don't know much about Deuteronomy, um, this is actually um, this is actually Moses's final like speech or sermon to the Israelites, because remember, he does not get to go into the promised land, which he actually addresses in here. And we're going to talk about that, but he doesn't get to go into the promised land and We're going to talk about why, but I want to get to that verse first. But he's actually giving them all of this recount in these first two chapters of where they have come from and why they've been 
wandering in the wilderness and what happened. Okay, so this is at the tail end of the 40 years. So the 40 years has passed. Moses is talking to them um, about going into the promised land and He's addressing them the final time before he passes and they go on into the promised land. And so we're going to start with verse one and read um, through probably a lot of the first chapter. We're going to let God guide and just see where we land. Um, But verse one says, these are the words that Moses spoke to the to Israel beyond the Jordan in the wilderness in the Arba opposite soup between Paran and Tapel, Laban, Hazaroth and Dizahab. It is eleven day. It is eleven days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Ber- Bernia. In the fortieth year, on the first day of the eleventh month. Okay, so it's been forty years. It's on the first day of the eleventh month. Okay, so it's been forty years. So it is the in the fortieth year, right? And it is just an eleven day journey. To the promised land. So that's what we have to wrap our mind around here. It is only 11 days. The promised land is an 11 day journey away. And they've been wandering. And in this wilderness for 40 years. And it's because of their disobedience. So if you haven't been here. You don't know what happened. They sent spies into the promised land when they first got there and they actually went and brought back fruit and everything from the promised land and then said, we can't go in. We're, we're going to go through that, but we can't go in because there's giants in the land. And so they didn't do it. Well, they tried after that and they got defeated, but they didn't do it because they made the Lord mad, and he was like, no, you're not going in. Um, None of y'all will see the promised land because you were disobedient to me. So your children will take the promised land except for Caleb and um, who was the other one? It's in here. So we're going to keep going. On the first day of the 11th month, Moses spoke to the people of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him in the commandment to them. After he had defeated Shion, the king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, the, and Og, the king of Bashan, who lived in, um, these are a lot of words, Azeroth in Edrei, <laughs> beyond the Jordan and the land of Moab, Moses undertook to explain this law. So he's already given them the law. Now he is explaining the law. Now he's going to go, Joshua, yes. Thank y'all. Now he's going to go into, um, like an explanation of the law. Like, okay, you have the law. Now let me go into further detail explaining the law. Meaning like he wants them to grasp all of this that he's leaving them with. Like he wants them not to repeat the same things they've been repeating over and over and over again. He wants them to understand the weight of what just happened. Because remember, this is a whole new generation that has come up. So he's he's like, okay, I need you to take this. Let's not do this again, you know? And so verse six says, the Lord, our God, capital L-O-R-D, so Yahweh, he's still addressing him as Yahweh 40 years later. The Lord, our God, has said to us in Horeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the hill country of the Amorites and to their neighbors in the Arabah and the hill country and in the lowland and in the Negev and by the seacoast the land of the Canaanites and Lebanon as far as the great river and the great Euphrates. So he's saying it is time to walk into the promised land. Like you have waited long enough. You have stayed long enough on th- at this mountain. Um, he's like, it's time. It's time to turn and take your journey is what verse seven says. Let's go to the promised land. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their offspring after them. So he's not saying he's not saying he's being faithful, even because of this generation. God is keeping his promise because of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. It's not because of Israel's obedience to him it is because of the promise that he made to their forefathers the promise that he made to abraham that's why he's keeping his promise because they have not been faithful they've not been a people that have been faithful and that have stuck with god and that have honored him above all else okay 
So when God keeps a promise, he's going to bring it to fulfillment. He's never going to leave you hanging. He's going to, he's going to fulfill his promise. He's going to, he's going to do what he's going to do. Okay. So verse nine says, at that time, I said to you, I am not able to bear you by myself. This is um, Moses, right? He's saying this. At that time, I said to you, I'm not able to bear you by myself. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and behold, you are today as numerous as the stars of heaven. That's the promise from Genesis 15, 5 that God made to Abraham. Like, look at the stars. You this is how this is the great, how great your offspring will be. But remember, at that time the God was saying that, right? Abraham and Sarah didn't even have, or Sarah didn't even have a son or a offspring yet. So this promise that is huge, this promise that God kept is is big. Like it's like they didn't even have a kid yet, and God's promising this, and He's like, look at look at all this, look at all this. You're about to have a child. With, I'm going to keep my promise to you. I'm going to keep my promise to Sarah, and your offspring is going to be bigger than the stars of heaven. Like this is it. And and now we're here in Deuteronomy, right? And so we're here. We're, we're, we're staring at the promise right here in this chapter um, being or already fulfilled. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, make you a thousand times as many as you are and bless you. And as, as he has promised you, Sorry, I can't really read this. It's like too far away from me. How can I how can I bear by myself the weight and the burden of you and your strife? Choose for your tribes wise, understanding, experienced men. And I'm not going to read all of this, but this is when um, Moses is recounting. Remember the time when he was like, I can't I'm not doing this by myself. I can't do this by myself anymore. Like this is too much to do by myself. I've got to have some help. These people, they can't, they can't make up their mind whether they're mad about coming out of Egypt or whether they're going to praise you. And like, God, I got to have, I got to have some help. And remember, like he gets the leaders from every single tribe and they actually help him prophesy. And Moses is glad because remember the people tried to come up against Moses and say, how dare they? Like, how dare they be prophesying? Like, they are not. Um, how can they hear from God? And Moses is like, no, no, we want people to be able to hear from God. That's not a bad thing. And and Moses was basically saying what we say on here or what I say on here all the time. Their calling is not your competition. Like Moses was like, no, we're not going to be jealous because other people are hearing from God. That's a good thing. That's not something to be jealous of. Like, no, we're glad for that. We're good that God is is blessing and moving and, and working in other people. Like, that's what I prayed for is what Moses is saying. That's what I went to God about. And he's answering that. No, we're happy for that. We're happy for that. And their, their hearing from God does not negate my hearing from God. Like God is big enough to speak to all of us. Like God is big enough to use all of us. Just because one person is being blessed doesn't mean that you're missing your blessing. Like God is big enough to, to bless everybody, to use everybody, to call everybody, to move in everybody. Because just because he's moving in somebody else does not mean he's not going to move in you. So Moses is recounting all of that. He's like, hey, do you remember when you called all of those people and, and God started moving them too because I prayed and I needed help because there was so many of y'all and there's like one of me and y'all a little crazy and kept trying to say you wanted to go back to Egypt. Not really that he didn't say it in that way, but I'm sure he thought that. Um, but y'all kept wanting to go back to Egypt and I needed a little bit of help, you know, so here we are. And then let's jump down to verse 19. And the title of this one says, Israel's refusal to enter the land. This is the promised land part. Okay, this is the whole reason why they've been in the wilderness for 40 years. Now, remember, about every other chapter, all the way up until the promised land, they're like, even after they, they send the spies into the promised land, they're like, oh, we love God. Let's praise God. For what he just did, whatever it was, whether it was manna or water or provision or whatever it was, like, let's praise God. He's so good. And then the next chapter, they're mad about they don't want to eat that food anymore. And they don't, you know, like they need something to drink. And they're like, we'd be better in Egypt, you know. So it was like back and forth the whole time. Like, we're, we love God. He's so good. He's He's called us out. Like, we are his, all this kind of stuff he's providing. And then the next chapter would be, 
God, why are we here? We'd be better in bondage. Like this is not, this is not it. Like we, we miss the garlic and the onions and all that kind of stuff. So it was a back and forth all the way that then they get to the promised land and this happens. So verse 19 says, Then they set out from Horeb and went through all the great and terrifying wilderness that you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites, as the Lord our God has commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said to you, You have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. God is giving it to us. Like he's already told us it's ours. They're standing there at it, right? Verse 21 says, See, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up, take possession, as the Lord, the God of our of your fathers, has told you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then all of you came near me and said, Let us send men before us, that they may explore the land for us and bring us word again out of the way by which we must go up and the cities to which we shall come. The thing seemed good to me, and I took 12 men from you. The thing seemed good to me. Moses is like, it seemed good to me. God's already told us we're going to get it. Um, And I took 12 men, and they basically went in. They took some of the fruit of the land and all of this. And, okay, verse 25, this is where I wanted to read. And said, and they took in their hands some of the fruit of the land and brought it down to us and brought us word again and said, it is a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. So they took the fruit and they said, is a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. Yet you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hated us, (laughs) he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to give us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. They're looking at the promised land. It's called the promised land because it was promised. Like they're literally looking at it. God has led them there through the parting of the Red Sea, provisional food that literally fell from heaven, um, water that came from rocks, all this kind of stuff that they'd seen. The whole time that they're in, they're on the way to this promised land, they get to the promised land and they go in, they even see the fruit of it. But they're like, no, we're not going in. God hates us because he took us out of Egypt. That's why this next part got, that's why this next part happened. Verse 28 says, where are we going up? Our brothers have made our hearts melt saying the people are greater and taller than we. (laughs) The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. And besides, we have seen the sons of Anakim there, which means giants. That's what that um, the sons of Anakim means. Giant. It's the giant people. Like it says, they're bigger than and taller than us. That's what the Bible refers to as giants. So when it says there were giants in the land of Canaan, um, now I don't know specifically how big these were. I don't think it's like it's not like the jolly green giant, like the fairy tale. It's more like they they were just some big people. They were very large people. Um, if you've listened to the Bible recap, um, some uh, people refer to them as Nephilim, which is like fallen angels and humans mated and made really large, overly large people. Um that's what some interpretations are because of some different scriptures. And you can go like look up uh, Tara Lee Cobble's um, explanations of those things. So if you want to do that, you can. Um, that's very interesting to me. It's a very, um, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with it. I'm just kind of like, wow, that's really strange and a little bit weird. Um, but there's a lot of weird things that happen in the Bible. Like if, if you think the Bible is not interesting, you're just not, digging into it enough to find out all the different things but they were they were they were big they were giants and so um they were a lot bigger than them and so they looked at them and was like no we can't take the land because they're big right yeah Goliath's people like that's the Nephilim yeah um and I don't know if these were exactly the, the Nephilim that she was referring to in that particular passage of scripture these were just like some really big people um but it does use the word they were they were giants so i don't know this could just be like an off spring of the nephilim i don't really know i have no idea i didn't look into this i didn't read that but those are two different references in so far in scripture of like giants and when it talks about nephilim that is the breeding of the uh people think that it's the or 
people have studied and are assumed that it could have been fallen angels and people that made it and created these bigger people. Um, these are referred to as giants. I'm not sure if it's, it's not obviously the same line. Could be, I don't know. They could have branched off and made it with more people and become bigger people. Who knows? But these specifically were referred to as the sons of Anakim, which could be the same uh, of the same descendants. We don't know. They were just big people. So that's just some interesting stuff for to spark your interest in this a little bit more if you want to dig into it and learn more about all that kind of stuff. Um, but it says, then I said to you, do not be in dread or afraid of them. The Lord your God goes before you and him and he before you will himself fight for you just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. I'm going to read that again because I got tongue tied. The Lord your God who goes before you will himself fight for you just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes and in the wilderness where you have seen how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son all the way that you went until you came to this place. He's like, God has carried you. That's what he was telling them. Like God has been the one that brought you out of the, the land of Egypt. You saw it with your own eyes. You saw the miraculous things that God did in Egypt. So it wasn't just about the journey they'd just been on and all the things that they'd seen, but they but they literally experienced God tearing down every single little G God of the Egyptians through the plagues. They saw that. They would have known exactly what God was doing. There's no way that it was coincidence or chance because it was literally Literally so intentional. They lived in Egypt. They would have known what all of the, the gods that Pharaoh worshipped were. So they, they single-handedly experienced God tearing down all of that to prove that he is the one true God and that he was taking them out of that. And then they went through the wilderness with God. And Moses is like, you're standing here. You're literally standing here. And you're saying because these people are bigger than you, you can't take it. When God just defeated the the really the ruler probably of that time was Pharaoh. And so he's like, you you saw him defeated by the God that you serve. And you're standing in front of the land that he promised. Why won't you just go and take it? Yet in spite of this word, you did not believe the Lord your God. <laughs> who went before you in the way to seek you out a place to pitch your tents. In fire by night and in cloud by day to show you by what way you should go. He said the whole reason why God wasn't letting them go into the promised land was because of this right here. You did not believe the Lord your God. That is that right there. That statement right there is the difference between eternity with Jesus and eternity without him. That statement right there, like believing, believing in the Lord, your God as the provision, as the provider, and not just a head knowledge belief, because we know the demons know about God. They, they believe in Jesus. They believe in him. They shudder at the mention of God's name. It's not about a head knowledge belief. It's about a heart knowledge that that really is the God that he says he is. He is my God. It's different saying that is that is God and that is my God. That's two different statements. Yeah, yeah, that's God. He's up there somewhere. No, that's my God. It becomes personal. It becomes um, provisional. It becomes protection. It becomes a lot of different things when it becomes mine and not just the, right? Yes, he's the God, but he is also my God. Just different. It's personal. Um, verse 34 says, and the Lord heard your words and was angered and he swore not that these men of this evil generation shall see the good land that I swore to give your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it and to him and to his children. And I will give the land on which he has trodden because he has wholly followed the Lord. <laughs> it's so interesting to me. That I don't didn't even think about this till literally right now. But Moses didn't get to go in because of his disobedience. And Moses was was follow Moses loved the Lord. God was very evidently using Moses. Okay, and he's about to talk about that. Let me let me read that part before I go into that. Um, he has wholly followed the Lord. Verse 37 says, Even with me, the Lord was 
angry on your account and said, you also shall not go in there. This is Moses. He said, even with me, even with me, Moses, even with me, the Lord was angry on your account and said, you also shall not go in there. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall enter. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. <laughs> as And as for you and your little ones, who you said would become a prey, and your children who today have no knowledge of good or evil, they shall go in there. And to them I will give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn and journey into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. Go back the way that you came to the to the part where you obviously um, saw every bit of my provision. Go back in the way of the Red Sea. Like, turn around and go back there. There's so many things I want to unpack there. Um, just in that one paragraph that I didn't even see until right now, and I know that that's the Holy Spirit. Caleb is mentioned even above Joshua every single time for his faith. Every single time. Do you notice that? Joshua is getting to go in. He's getting a part of that. But remember, Caleb was the first one to stand up. When nobody else did, Caleb stood up and was like, what are you talking about? We can go in. Like, we, th no, God says we can take them. We can do it. Like, no, what, what are all y'all afraid of? Like, this is, no, like we've seen the provision of our God. We can go. Like, we can do this. Like, he was the hype man. Like, no, we believe in God. Like, we believe that he's going to be the provision. We believe that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. Like, have y'all, what, what, what has God been doing for us for all these years we've been in the, the wilderness, right? Like for these couple of years, we've been seeing the Red Sea and the departure from Egypt and all these. What, of course, he's going to let us in. Like this is what this is who our God is. It says because he wholly followed the Lord. Caleb was willing to speak up when no, when it wasn't popular, when nobody else wanted to speak up on behalf of the Lord to Moses and say that we can go in when all the people of Israel were listening to all of the other spies and saying, we can't do it. Those people are too big. Caleb is uh, like, no, we can. That's who our God is. And then Joshua stands up and backs up Caleb. And he's like, you're right. Yes, we can. We can do this. And so because Joshua had enough faith, when Caleb stood up to back him up to go with Caleb to be like, yes, you're right, Caleb. You're right. We can, we can do this. You know, um, even when nobody else did, nobody else said that they could, there was something about, we can see that it's evident in scripture. There was something about Caleb having the courage to stand up when nobody else would and say that God was who he said he was and that he was going to fulfill his promise. There's just something about being some being the first person to say yes to the Lord when everybody else is saying no. And we can see that right now in the evidence of Deuteronomy. There is something about, yes, there is something about being encouraged by other people's faith. But there is something about being the one who is faithful when nobody else is. When there's nobody else around to encourage you or be the hype person or be the person that makes you feel like you're not alone, there is something different about standing up and being the one to say yes to God when nobody else has. Your faith may be the very one to encourage the, jo the Joshua to stand up next, to be the one to say, yep, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You know, JJ, you're right, Tabitha. Like that, you're there, you're right. We can do it because the Lord says that we can. Be the Caleb who's going to stand up in the midst of, of a perverse and crooked and wicked generation and say, No, we are following the Lord. That period. Like this is it. I don't care if anybody else in my circle thinks that what I believe is right. I'm standing up and I'm following the Lord. And you may just be the person to stand up and be the person that encourages the Joshua to do the same. Uh, just just be the Caleb, be the one who is going to stand up in the face of everybody else saying that it, it's impossible and say, no, we serve a possible God. That's who he is. And if he says that's who he is, that he's going to bring it to completion. And then Moses, even though he went through the entire process with God, 
and grew so much in his in his walk. We we can see that through scripture unfolding how faithful he became to God. He he says, even with me in verse 37, the Lord was angry on your account and said, you also shall not go in there. And that is because of, I'll just read it in the study notes. It says, Moses's failure occurred when he disobeyed the Lord's instructions at Meribah. Um, it's Numbers uh, 20 verses 2 through 13 if you want to go read about it. But Moses allowed this is this is what I get from this, okay? Moses allowed the frustration of everyone around him to dictate his reaction, and that mattered. That mattered that he walked with the Lord, that God was speaking to him, that he was the one that was prophesying to the people. So he was the only one that they really had because we know what Aaron did. He, he was the one that built the, the golden calf, right, when Moses went up. So Moses was the only one that was really demonstrating to them faith in God and, and really demonstrating to them what it meant to be consistent in their faith and, and to lean on God and rely on God. And so when he did that and was angry and, and all of that and reacted in the way he did, I wrote down in my Bible, our reactions to others does matter. Be angry and sin not. Like, it's okay to get angry. Jesus flipped tables. It's okay to ha- to get angry. It's okay to have be mad. It's okay to get frustrated and aggravated at people and all of that kind of stuff. But it has to be a righteous type of anger when you belong to God. It has to be something that leads us to be, like, want them to be better, not to just prove to ourselves that we are, like, some, you know, not to show our human side, not to show our flesh, but to show our righteousness in Christ. And and we should get angry about the things that make God angry. We should be angered about the world and the fact that sin just runs rampant. We should be mad about those things and, and on fire about those things and want that to change. We should get fired up about those things. But in the midst of a sinful, crooked, perverse generation, we're meant to show them Christ and what it looks like to maintain our faithfulness to Him. And so our reaction does matter. Our reaction in light of those things, it absolutely matters, right? Um. Anyways, it, it goes on like they tried to go in. That didn't wind up in their favor. And then in, in chapter 2, I wanted to read this part. <clears throat> in chapter 2, Verse 7, it says, For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He knows you're going through this great wilderness. (laughs) God has been blessing them even through their disobedience. They've they've not went without. God has blessed. They went without the promised land, but that was their punishment for their go trying to do their own thing. But God is with them. He's been with them through it. It says, these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. Never left or forsaken. Um, God has been with them through it. And that's really, that's really all I can say. Because I can fluff that up, but that's all you have to say. God never left them. Even though they chose to do this own thing and go their own way, God was still with them. He was still blessing them and providing for them. He was still with them in the wilderness. He was still turning all things for good, right? He was still working it for good and for his glory because he was going to get the glory out of it. He was going to, which kind of brings me um, to my next conversation that I wanted to have with you guys. And I've gone back and forth about this um, for a while uh or like really since Saturday about talking to you about this and I know that this is going to sound so silly to some of y'all and it's going to be so serious to some other ones but um this kind of just a repercussion of putting yourself out there on the internet um it's kind of just having to be vulnerable and being willing to take the repercussions of every single thing that you do I mean y'all know I could like several months ago, I was drinking an energy drink and got ripped apart by just about <laughs> half the internet, um, it feels like. And so um, 
I I am, I want you guys to know I am solid in my walk with Christ. Like I know him. I 100% know him. I know his voice. I know what he's brought me through. I know what he's done in my life. I um, have seen him work in my life. I've seen him go through the wilderness with me. I've seen him bring me out on the other side. I have literally walked with Jesus for more years than not. (laughs) But I really got serious about my faith after... um, one of the hardest years of my whole entire life, which was 2021 and 2022. I mean, 2020 and 2021, two of the hardest years of my life, Um, not only because of COVID, but because I went through um, three autoimmune diseases. Um, I'm literally like shaking telling all this. And I know that that sounds, it's not anything serious. I just know how mean people can be sometimes. And so I felt like I wanted to explain myself and I didn't know how I was going to do it, but this is what God has put on my heart this morning. And so anyways, um, went through some of the hardest things in my life and the enemy, I, I have a history of suffering with mental illness and God has completely transformed my life out of that because I'm telling you, I wouldn't even be sitting here today if he had not brought me through some of the most difficult things in my life. So, um, gosh, man, I just, I already know that some people are going to be so mad and, and that's okay. Um, this was a personal decision that I made with Jesus. And I know y'all are probably like, this is so, what are you talking about, Ashley? But about two years ago, when I came out of that season, that dark, dark season of my life, um, my husband uh, and I, it was hard. And I haven't even shared like all of the, the deepest parts of it, but it was it was hard. And um, I told Dustin, I said, I want to go um, get a, a tattoo to symbolize what, um, God had just brought me out of. (laughs) And, um, I don't know. I just, I let uh, several different people's opinions like speak into that because I know that we can all have very different opinions on interpretations of scriptures of those things. And it's been two years, um, since I have wanted to do that. And I know that y'all, some of y'all are like, this is so silly, Ashley. And some of y'all are like, maybe mad at me already, but, um, Anyways, there's a girl that goes to my church, and she actually owns um, a, a tattoo parlor, and she, uh, <laughs> so I messaged her about a month ago, and I was like, I, I want to do this because I want it to be an outward way to minister to people, not only for people, but for me to remember. This is my um, pillar in the wilderness <laughs> to remember what God has brought me through, Um because I'm telling y'all, I haven't shared a lot of the deepest parts of this story, but I I would not be sitting here today um, if I would have let the devil win. And there's been so many times where he's tried to resurface those things. And I have been like, no, not happening. This is not happening. And I have fought him tooth and nail to not get back in that place. And um. Anyways, so I went Saturday and I know that this this seems silly to have to justify yourself but when but when you have when you do what I do for for not for a living but for you guys um y'all are a big part of my life. Like I literally was sitting there Saturday and I started crying thinking about if if I like hurt somebody and Dustin was like, "Ashley, you have to explain why." And, um, so I, I, I got one and I know that some people may unfollow me or think that I, I, it's inherently sin and all that kind of stuff. And if you do that, that's, I'm, trust me, like, it's okay. Um, but I went and got Romans eight twenty eight on my wrist. And the reason why I did that is because every time I brush my teeth or put on my makeup or do anything, I'm reminded that. Every single thing in my life works for the good. Every single thing in my life. And it's such a testimony and a reminder to literally the fact that I'm sitting in this seat right now. 
And um, I, I just, I hope that I didn't let somebody down or disappoint somebody because I, when I tell you that I prayed about this more than, it, I mean, like I have nothing wrong with tattoos. I don't, I personally think that we don't fall under the law anymore, but I do think that if you're going to get one done, it can't be for vanity. It has to be for some type of ministry or to bring God glory or, or something like that. My sister, um, says, write it on your heart before you write it on your skin. Um, but I, I write this Bible verse all the time on my hand, um, to just to remember, to like, see it and be like, okay, God's going to work this for good. I don't know how he's going to do it though. And I know that this is one of those very open, like, you know, like some people think that it's sin. Some people don't. I listened to sermons on it. I did so much research on scripture, on what the scriptures meant, on what the scripture meant in Leviticus, on how we are to treat our bodies now. Y'all know that I'm like so big on that, that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit and all of that. And so anyways, I, I went through all of that, but I did get this on my wrist and I knew that y'all were going to see it <laughs> and I didn't want to like hide it because obviously I'm not ashamed that I did it. I know the purpose for it for me was so that I am reminded of my wilderness and what God has brought me through and the good that he has worked out of it and also for other people people like to for for me to be able to have the opportunity to share what God has brought me through with other people to be able to say this is this is why like if somebody says oh I love that what does that mean oh well let me just tell you about the darkest time in my life that God has delivered me from let me just tell you about the good that he's worked in my life out of some things I never thought that I was going to make it out of um and you know, I'm not reading the comments right now because I know that y'all are like supportive and some of y'all are going to make me cry positively and it may be negative. I don't know some of the other ones, but I just, y'all are my people and I was going to make a video about it. And then I was like, no, I'm going to talk to, I'm going to let God direct the conversation. And I knew that this morning was the time that God had led me to, to share why. Um, not that I'm saying that you need to go get a tattoo and not that I'm saying that if your conviction is that it's wrong to go get one and that you're wrong. Not that I'm saying if your conviction is that you can be covered in them, that's fine too. I'm, I'm not, I'm just sharing my heart with you guys and I did it so that God can be glorified. Um, I did it so that hopefully that I can reach people through it. I did it so that I can be reminded that God should be glorified in my life and that if I have to suffer, he's worthy. <laughs> if I have to go through anything like that ever again, he's worthy. If he chooses to answer no, he's worthy. If I remain the same, he's worthy. If he heals, he's worthy. It doesn't matter. Like everything is for his glory, every single bit of it. Out of all the things I never thought there could be good from, but God, you're right. Every single thing. And um, anyways, it just has a, a big meaning and purpose in my life. And um, that's why I put the placement there too, so that other people could see it. But but more so for me, for my pillar, like when I'm telling y'all, some of y'all think that I'm one of the strongest people. And I know that because of the messages that you send me, but I'm telling y'all, it is but God, <laughs> because I just wouldn't be sitting here today if it hadn't been for him. And so I just, I just really wanted to share that. And I know, um, I just, I know the only thing I found in scripture about tattoos is that tattoos and names deceased loved ones, right? And, uh, and that's part of the law. And we don't live under the law anymore. And everything that I researched was like, we don't live under the law anymore. And if, we, or if we're going back to the law for one single verse, we have to go back to the law for everything. And I am definitely not doing that. Like, first of all, I like bacon. You can't eat pork if you go back to the law. Um, you've got to make all of these sacrifices. And Lord, I would never be able to work or do anything. I'd be at the temple every day trying to trying to make amends and God's not going to accept it anymore because the sacrifice has already been paid through his son. So anyways, um, I feel like I can breathe now because I've been about to throw up about that. Um, because I don't want, and I know that that sounds so silly, but when you put, when you open yourself up to the internet, <laughs> 
I'm telling you, there are not, there are some mean people. And 90% of the people that I've encountered are the meanest are the people that claim to know Christ. Um, and it shouldn't be like that. It should not be like that. And, um, the only way that we can judge somebody is by their fruit and the fruit doesn't happen all at once. And, and it's the fruit of the spirit. It's not by outward appearances or, or things that we cast judgment on. It is only by the fruit. And I truly hope that people see my fruit and know that if we do all things to glorify God, that he's going to get glory in all of all the things. And um, so anyway, it's about your heart posture. You're so right, Anna. It's all about your heart posture. And, you know, I listen to y'all know that I love, love um, a lot of stuff by John Piper. And I don't claim to be a Calvinist. I just really like his stuff and the way that he breaks down scripture and stuff. I don't claim to be anything. I'm just a Christian that loves Jesus and follow truth. So I really like a lot of his stuff. And he's very, he's very against them, not because they're sin, just because he doesn't like them. He thinks they're ugly. So, uh, you know, like that's a whole nother side of the coin. Um, but anyway, um, I just, I'm glad I got that out and shared it. And it wasn't because I was afraid what God thought of me. It's just people can be really cruel. And, um, I've had people tell me I don't take my, my influence seriously. And it's probably one of the most serious I've ever been about anything in my whole entire life because I understand the weight of having influence in the kingdom of God. It, it to much is given, much is much is required. I'm well aware of that. Um, be a Caleb. Yeah. I also wanted to share with y'all, there is this big thing going around that apparently this clock app um is potentially going to be banned um it's moving pretty quickly through um through congress and everything and i don't know i know that they've mentioned it before but this time it has really moved very quickly through congress and so um i will keep going on youtube but if that happens just know that you know patreon youtube all of those things will still be there but um i think it's like TikTok will have like five months or something to respond to the government if they they sign the bill or whatever. But um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I did read about it a little bit and I was like, mm, it's more serious than it's ever been. Um, and there's always an agenda. And with that, uh, one of the signs of the time is that false truth will be pushed out before real truth. <laughs> and um, this app is probably one of the most free like speech that like you can you can talk about Jesus and not get filtered. <laughs> yeah. A same schedule for live on YouTube. Yeah. And I don't know when it'll happen. I'm not trying to invoke fear, or, you know, start anything, but it was on the news yesterday and it's been everywhere on the news and it's already passed one level of Congress, I think. So um the I think the president's already said he'll sign it if the Senate and Congress will sign it. So it's potential that it'll happen. And so I'm just letting y'all know. Um, Dustin was like, oh, my goodness, like that's that's, you know, like, you know, you've worked so hard. And I was like, God's in control. You know, yeah, does it kind of stink? And it's not about me. Anyway, this platform isn't about me. It's about God. It's I mean, 100 percent. If God takes it away, it's it's okay. Like, that's not my thing anymore. That's not what he's meant for me to do. Maybe I'm meant to move to somewhere else and, and be a missionary. I don't know. You know, like it's all about God. It's all for his glory. Anyway, that's the great thing about not doing this for like, you know, this isn't this, I'm not like a, you know, got a million people in posting clothing hauls. You know, I just, I'm doing this for the glory of God. And when everything is for the glory of God, no matter what happens, he's in control. He's got this. It's, it's all right. Like, it's not a, it's not a big deal. Like if, if God does it and allows it to happen, he's got a plan. He's got a plan and it doesn't hinder his plan for me. No government or president can do that. No bill that is signed can hinder a purpose that or a calling that God has on your life. There's nobody that can hinder what God is going to do in your life. If you believe in God, then you believe that he is sovereign and he is over all. And so he's going to remain sovereign and over all. And there's not one single person that can hinder his plan for you, except for you saying no. <laughs> so he's big enough. He's huge. He's, he's great enough. 
anyways, um, yeah, that's true, Jessica. Jessica said, I'm not, I don't think it's going to be taken down completely. I think it'll be sold to Facebook and just be controlled. Um, yeah, that's possible too. But anyways, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Those are two things that I wanted to talk to y'all about this morning. And I feel like I can breathe again because um, I love you guys. And y'all y'all have no idea how much I pray for y'all and how much I pray over y'all. And that um, y'all seek the Lord for yourself and not just look for me for answers. Like, seek the Lord for yourself. Ask God for yourself and, and seek Him and and I hope that every single aspect of who he is, is drawing you in and that you want to know him more and all those kind of things, because he's so worthy of that. He's so good to be praised. He's so, he's so worthy. Um, and my spring break is next week. So, um, anyways, I don't, I don't know for sure if we're traveling or what, but I'll let y'all, you guys know. And regardless of if we are traveling or not, I will try to at least upload videos if I'm not able to go live. But right now I don't have a plan not to. It depends on if we're going to travel with my mom or not. And we haven't decided for 100% because of the weather and stuff. Just waiting to see on that. But thank you for bringing that up. Um, anyways, Oh, Ashley, can we get a tattoo reveal? Yeah, because I like I like pull my sleeve up and like put it down real quick. Like I was gonna add it. Um, it's just Romans 8 28 is what it is. It's just right there. And that's why I wanted it right there. Because when I put my makeup on or brush my teeth or do anything else, it's a reminder for me that God is He's gonna work it for good. It doesn't matter what Satan tries to bring against me. Every time I touch my face, I'm right-handed. And so every time I touch my face or look in the mirror or whatever, it's the first thing that I am noticing now. And it reminds me that God has got this, that he's got it. He's He's got it, period. And it has been written on my heart for years now. And um, I've used, I've pinned it on my hand a million and ten times, like reminding myself. And so anyways, um, thank y'all. Y'all are literally... I love y'all. I do. Um, I like it. And I don't even like tattoos. I, I know. And a lot of people don't. And that's totally, I get it. That's totally, that's totally 100%. I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just saying this is something that I prayed about to make sure that it wasn't something that the Holy Spirit was going to convict me of. Like I wanted, I wanted to remove all opinions and sit with the Holy Spirit on it. And I know that sounds silly, but th that's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> that's what we're supposed to do as Christians is sit with him on stuff and, and follow personal convictions because maybe God convicts you not to. And maybe it's because eventually in your life, he's going to send you somewhere where it will be missionally limiting. Like you, like the place he has called you to that you don't even know yet is not going to accept that. And I don't know, maybe he did not not convict me not to because the person that I'm going to reach may be impacted by that the opposite way and that he's going to use that to get glory out of my life. And he's going to use that to to be able to share and spread his testimony. I mean, I believe both sides of that coin. One hundred percent. I believe that you have to follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Um. Anyways, so um, I'm, I'm going to pray us out. I'm going to pray us out and I'm going to, um, I'm going to just, man, thank God for you guys because y'all are my people. Y'all are my people. And I love y'all from the very, very, very bottom of my whole entire heart. Um, I don't think that y'all know and understand that as much as I can convey it across the screen, but I do. Um and I'm very thankful for y'all. And the first thing that I said when Dustin was like, TikTok's going to be banned. I was like, oh, my people. <laughs> I was like, that's that's the part that I'm sad about. Not about me. About like y'all. Um, like getting to connect with y'all and stuff. And then I was like, I got YouTube. It'll be all right. That's fine. That's fine. Anyways, let's pray. And then we're going to go do all the things, right? I don't know if AJ's on, but he loves that uh, when I say that. So. Dear God, I come to you today and I just, I just want to thank you for, um, man, just answering so many prayers, God, for giving 
strength and courage. And God, I I um I thank you for speaking to us. I thank you for convicting us individually, God. I thank you for showing your grace and your mercy to us, God. I thank you for giving us your word to show us your provision in the wilderness. God, thank you for allowing us to see that you are good, that you have a plan for us, and that nothing in the world can hinder that from taking place, that you will fulfill your promise to us. You will keep your promises. There's not a president or a senator or a congressman or a regular person off the street or our boss or anyone that can separate us from your love and from what you have called us to do. God, help us to be obedient in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. I love you guys. Um, I really thought with that sound, that TikTok went off. So that's why I like cut it short. I thought, oh my goodness. Well, something just happened, but I guess y'all are all still here. Um, but I love you guys. And I pray that today that you, um, you feel that and you know that. And no matter what the enemy tries to tell you, that you understand that you are loved and that there's somebody that loves you so much. And it's me and Jesus. So I hope that y'all have a great day and I will see y'all in the morning. Bye, you guys. All right. I love you guys. Um, and I will see y'all. Oh, wait. Hold on. Your lives on TikTok don't come up. I thought you were on a break until I went to YouTube. I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> I've been stocking up on the corgis for when Pierce comes. <laughs> I love it. Um, he'll love that. Uh. Yeah, I don't know why TikTok is acting a little bit strange, but it's been doing that for a little while now, so I'm not really sure what's going on, but I um I love you guys and I will see y'all tomorrow morning. Um Oh, a live band. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But I will see y'all in the morning and I hope that y'all have the absolute best day ever. Bye you guys. <laughs>